Was taking red kratom the same as taking opiates for me? Red kratom and opiates, they are very, very, very similar. In fact, there is a ton of controversy that is around kratom. Even though it is legal in most of the states out there, there's only four states right now that kratom is illegal in. In the state of Idaho, it is legal. In California, where I lived, it is legal. And I ended up taking it for 30 days. If you're new to the channel, hit the like and subscribe button. Is kratom and opiates the same? When I took red kratom, I took red kratom as an experiment. I did actually all the kratoms. I did white, green, and red kratom. I wanted to do them for 30 days to see what the effects were because I'd heard a lot of positivities about kratom. And now, don't get me wrong, if you do use kratom, hey, I'm a big fan of trial and error of whatever works for you, works for you, do you. I'm a huge, huge, huge advocate when it comes to that. And I even hate the word advocate. I'm just a big supporter. How about that? When it comes to red kratom and opiates, these are the two most common, especially even with heroin, because this hits the same receptors as opiates do. Uh, what makes opiates so addicting is your brain actually bonds with it. Your brain accepts it and wants it. When it comes to cocaine, when it comes to a lot of this, you get a dopamine rush. But this is something that actually your chemical bonds with. So your body actually wants it. Your whole physical soul almost wants this. When I took opiates, because I have taken hydrocodone before, which is Norco's, one of the big things that it gave me, though, was a huge boost of energy with a lot of people. If they take opiates, they don't get necessarily a boost of energy. It almost puts you lackadaisical. You're just kind of numb. A lot of times you'll see heroin addicts are going to you know, shoot up and they're going to end up passing out. You don't see heroin addicts out there running the mile. Well, when I took opiates and I would take hydrocodone, I popped one pill and I felt on top of the world. I felt like I had a ton of energy. It changed my mood, it boosted it. One of the things that Red Kratom also did is it boosted my mood. Now I've never been in any kind of pain. So when it came to, I've broken bones before. I've been in that kind of pain. I've taken painkillers before. Never ever got hooked to painkillers. I did abuse them though. Uh, especially during RV shows, I would abuse Norcos. Now the big, like similarity that I saw between them though was my mood. Uh, both of these actually affected my mood. Now, uh, uh, Norco affected my mood immediately. With Red Kratom, it actually took it a couple days, but I did notice this huge mood increase. Everyone told me when I took Red Kratom, you'll probably be really sleepy. You're not gonna have a lot of energy. The, uh, it was the opposite for me. I had a ton of energy. It actually worked hand in hand with my Adderall. I didn't have any Adderall crashes. And it just, it made me always happy. And the same was with a Norco when I'm popping an opiate, both of them made me very, very happy. So there was a huge similarity in that, but I never noticed the pain similarity, but it was also something that I never struggled with. So I never was in any kind of chronic pain where I noticed the difference. Now, when you are withdrawing, you do go through a lot of pain. And when I withdrew from Red Kratom, because I took it for 30 days, I didn't take a high dosage amount. People were like, oh, you're just, you're being a pansy. You didn't take that much. Cause I only took like 5.3 grams, somewhere right around there. It was, it was eight capsules a day. But when I was withdrawing, I felt like I was dying and you really wanted to stop. And there's even times that I thought to myself, man, you know what? I never thought like defaulted to my brain. Hey, I'm going to go, let me go get a little bit of heroin or let me go get some, you know, opiates or let me go get some painkillers. Uh, but I did go through the thought process of, man, maybe I should get a little bit more red kratom. I won't hurt as bad. I'll feel better. Which showed me that it does have a massively addictive uh, property to it. But both opiates and heroin along with red kratom do have that addictive property to it so it is easily easily be, you know able to become addicted to so they were very similar in what they did for my mood so i have to say that both of these were pretty much identical what they did for my mood except that an opiate such as a norco hit my just my mood uh, like immediately it was that day where with red kratom it almost needed to get into my system and it wasn't until a couple days into it where I truly felt like, hey, I'm in just a great mood. Like my spirits are high and I had tons of energy and working out was so much easier. My body never hurt and I felt invincible. The opiates did the same thing. So there are definitely similarities between the two. I know a lot of people who have used red kratom to get off of opiate addiction, to even get off of heroin. And I know that it's had positive side effects for a lot of people out there. I also know people though that were trying to get off of opiates, went to red kratom, Ended up thinking Red Kratom was, this was the godsend. I don't need to be in a Suboxone clinic. I don't need to go to any kind of NA. I don't need any help. I can use this to get off. And it ended up relapsing even worse back onto opiates. So it's different for everybody. I mean, when it comes down to even sobriety, sobriety I really feel is different for everybody because everyone's journey is different. It's almost like religion. There's as many religions as there are people because we all 
take it in differently. Even when it comes to sobriety, we all take it in differently. I still call myself sober, even though I've taken all the Kratoms, I've microdosed with shrooms, I have tried weed uh, when it came to indica and sativa, wax, all of that, edibles, to help with anxiety, to help with depression. I trialed and erred with it all. The only thing that I always saw a little bit different was it wasn't something that I massively went through a mad withdrawal through. And I, I just, it was a constant battle. I mean, cocaine and, and alcohol is still a constant battle for me not to go out and use them both. When it came to the Kratom, I did feel the withdrawals from it. That was the closest I would have said that I would came almost in the sense to a relapse. Because like, I'm literally like starting to justify my brain when I was coming off of it of why I wanted more. Thankfully, I never got addicted to opiates hard enough where I went through a massive withdrawal. I think a lot of it had to do when I would abuse any of the opiates. It was for usually a seven-day span, which was the span of an RV show. So I would abuse them one pill a day for seven days, and I was constantly drinking, so I never went through a withdrawal that I would have felt physically and mentally. When it came to alcohol and cocaine, I was massively using those every single day. So those withdrawals were tremendous. The paws were very outstanding with them. I mean, I had to learn how to drive again when it came because I was so used to just driving mess up. And it was like I had to start relearning things. And that's one of the challenges when it comes to addiction. When it comes to red kratom and it comes to opiates, so I do feel that they are very similar. It's something to definitely be careful with. And again, though, for some people, I know that it was it's been a great experience. I know that it's helped tremendously. And there are differences, and I, and I even documented the differences between the white kratom, red kratom, and green kratom, or white kratom, green kratom, and red kratom. There were big differences that I noticed between them all. If I was to ever do kratom again, and, and somebody said you have to do this again, I would probably do the green kratom because that gave me the least amount of withdrawals with probably the best benefits. Where white kratom, I didn't really have any benefits to, and red kratom, I had tremendous benefits to, but I had a lot of withdrawals also. So be careful when you're trying this stuff. And also be careful of what your friends say because everybody's experience with drugs is tremendously different when we're trial and erroring it. And that's why even like with me, some people tell me, you know, well, Adderall didn't ever work for me, but Ritalin does. And you know what, Ritalin and Adderall never worked for me, but Vyvanse does. Again, that's why there is different medications out there because we all react and we all handle things differently. So don't ever forget that. When you're trial and erroring it through, remember that, it's going to be a battle, it's going to be a journey, and it's going to be hit and miss. And look at everything as a victory, even if it doesn't work, because you know what, you're getting closer to finding something that does. If you're actively using though, I, my suggestion is stay stay away from Red Kratom. These two did mirror each other very, very close and how it helped and, and worked with my, my attitude and it worked with my mood. Anything that ever changes my mood I have to be careful for because that was the big thing with alcohol and cocaine when I would start to drink that dopamine rush hit I felt invincible I felt on top of the world same with that cocaine I could feel myself salivating I was so excited to do it where if you get into that point especially with the kratom especially with opiates I mean you you got that full-on addiction going and you're going to be going through a fight if you're trying to get sober, I got links down below to NA and AA. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. I do share a lot about addiction because the worst part is, is when we are an addict and we're starting to go through it, we're trying to get sober, we feel alone. And the worst part is, is that's when all of our mental illness comes up. That's when all of our depression hits, our anxiety hits. It, I was sober for over a year and I attempted suicide because I was still working through it mentally. It's that much of a battle. And we always look for that shortcut. And I can see how like with Red Kratom, it's like a shortcut to getting sober. Hey, I'm going to switch over to this natural remedy that's from the coffee family. It's a, it's, it's all natural. It grows in the wild. I get it. I've been there. I'm that type of person too. I'm looking for that shortcut pill. And if somebody said, here's a sober pill, you only need to take one. And you're going to be sober for the rest of your life. I'm going to take two. I mean, that's, that's what our mentality is like. So if you're out there fighting and you're, you want to know what the first step is, just let everyone know that you're an addict. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to admit that you're an addict. It was easier for me to admit I was addicted to alcohol than it was cocaine. Because that one was like, oh, now I'm actually a drug addict. Where alcohol doesn't really have that stigma as much. So I can get it. I mean, if you're addicted to Kratom, I know how hard it is to be like, I'm addicted to Kratom. Even when it comes to weed, I, I think that people can get mentally addicted to weed. But again, these are only my opinions and no matter what it is, as long as you're not out there killing yourself, as long as you're not out there buying from your local pharmacist on the street corner, not knowing what you're getting, and you're not going to end up dead with a needle in your arm, keep fighting because you know what? You matter to some people.
And you might not think that you do, but you, you actually do. And at your funeral, somebody's going to show because they do miss you and that they love you. So if you're struggling, ask for help. Reach out for help. Let everybody know, hey, I'm going through something. I need your help. I'm an addict, and I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. And you know what? It can be a long, long battle. It took me 13 years to get sober. And you know what? You got this. So don't ever, ever, ever stop. You, you matter.